Hi, everybody. This is uh, Mike with Glossica, and I'm here with uh, Stu J. Hey, uh, everybody. Falling in from Bangkok, Thailand, and I'm calling in from Taipei, Taiwan. Yes. Good to see you, Stu J. It's, it, it, it's awesome to finally uh, catch up. This is the first time we've done it on Skype. Yeah. I think we missed each other on a couple trips there. You were in Taiwan, and I've been in Thailand, but we, we never actually met up yet. Right. And I, I think um, it's really exciting why we're doing this today. Um, both uh, Mike and I, we're, we're launching, um, you know, our, 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 our passion and our, our style of language uh, teaching to inspire people to learn languages. And um, there's a wonderful group uh, for people learning Thai uh, called Phalang um, can learn Thai. Phalang in Chinese like Lao Wai. But um, because people are always saying, no, foreigners can't learn Thai properly. And Mike would be in the same boat in China showing that, you know, the language is language and you can learn it. It's your passion, it's how you go about and how you understand it. And in Thailand, especially with learners of Thai, there's a huge um, issue of should you write that, because Thai uses a foreign script, should you write it in Roman letters when you're learning or should you just jump straight into the script? Now, while I support getting straight Those into the Romanizations, script. Those Romanizations, I can never figure out what is the right pronunciation. I see, I mean, the same thing is true when you're learning Chinese. So when I first start, started learning Chinese, I saw all these Romanizations and I said, I got to find something that I can, that is more exact that I can equate to. And so <laughs> I'll let you take it from there. No, well, well I, I, I agree. And so the, the, if you're having a Romanization system, it's got to be precise cover for each sound. Um, it's got to cover for the tones, the short and long and the stopped and all of these things. Now, the problem is if um, some person writes, for example, in Thai, Phalang, that word I just used, meaning Lao, why a foreigner? Somebody hears it and they might, Phalang, okay, F-A-R-A-N-G. And then all of a sudden they get home and they see F-A-R-A-N-G. But um, I say can't, you say can't. Right. I say Phalang, he says Farang. And so even though you had the best of intention writing it down, then right. when you go back and your home sound paradigm filters that through and that art becomes at, and then nobody understands what you're saying when you speak the language. Now, yeah. the only time I would say use another system is if you're using something like IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet, where it's precise. And that's what I did when I learned Chinese. I mapped up the IPA with pinyin and then I figured out because all my resources were written in pinyin. Right. And then when I saw what the IPA values for each of those pinyin letters were, I knew exactly how to pronounce Chinese. Right. So and then my Chinese pronunciation has always been pretty spot on from the beginning. And you would know, like if I, I grab any Chinese uh, linguistic book here and I open it up and, um, you know, look at it there, their IPA is in there oh, and, right. and it's yeah. spot on. Which is great with that. Uh, I think the Chinese list linguist should uh, be commended. Yeah, and, I, and I've showed you this book before. Uh, this is the Shiyong Tai Yu Ruman. This is for learning uh, Thai for Chinese speakers. And uh, they list all of the, the IPA right there in the book. So, so it's, uh, it, it's actually, the, I, the reason why I picked up this book is, uh, I don't know when I would start learning Thai. I, I'm an absolute beginner, but having the IPA there is really, really helpful. At least I can figure out now what all of the sounds of the Thai letters are and slowly ease in to the Thai alphabet. Right. And then and then through knowing those sounds and the rules, you can see how it's mapped into the system, which we're exactly. going to get into. But but Mike has just started uh, just uh, you know, Mike's just started learning Thai. So he's got no from my understanding, no real background in learning Thai. Right. I don't have any background. No. And so this I is have like a background in IPA, but I don't have I don't know the um, I guess Thai, the, the syntactic structure is similar to Chinese uh, based on what I, I've seen, but I'm really at an at absolute beginner level. I'm, I'm not really familiar with the, with the whole sound system, the Thai letters, um, but I can read IPA. Okay, That's cool. I can so, see. Mike, can you open, open a page there? And I'm just, uh, we'll just keep this short, maybe just a few sentences, but show how powerful IPA can be. If you understand, IPA aren't just the shapes, but it's the understanding of why a letter is pronounced the way it is. And okay, so, so, so let's I, try something. I've opened up the book to basically the middle of the book. And uh, if I were going to start this book, I'd probably start on lesson one. But right now I'm on lesson 11. 
Okay, can, can, you, can you hold real, that up to the screen quickly and we yeah, might be able to get a screen capture sentences. afterwards. These are real full length. Can you, can you see that? I, okay. I can see that. That's great. Okay, I'll get a screen capture of that and try and keep it on the screen now if you take it back and um, okay. have a go. <clears throat> All right, so uh, this is written in Chinese, but the, the first sentence here says, um, how far is it on foot? Okay, so um, now uh, you are telling me that the, I have to be careful with the, the long vowels and the short vowels. So this is something that's not really intuitive for a Chinese speaker because on the clipped endings, we, we tend to always make them short. So I'm going to try and do my best with this, but I'm going to just go along with the IPA, awesome. the best that I, uh, reading that I can do. So, Zaktini Baitanong Kondun Klaimai. Perfect. Zaktini Baitanong Den Klaimai. Great. Next one. Zaktini Baitanong Kondun Klaimai. Fantastic. And you can see you've got a bit of a Taiwanese accent in there with the, <laughs> with the, um, the, because the Taiwanese throat, uh, the, 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 Perfect. Instead of the dung, D, which you D would do it in Chinese. Bit, can I ask you, is the D a little bit ingressive, like a D? No, no, it it's not like Vietnamese. It's just that but, but in, the, in original Thai, the D actually had a stopped throat at the beginning. So it's D. Oh, oh, that's the same as the Hainan dialect. Yeah. In China. Okay. So try try so, another two sentences. Okay. Um, okay, so here's a sentence. If I'm going to this uh, this university, it's written in Chinese as Zhu La Song Gong Da Xue. What what's the name of that university? Uh, that that's Zhu La Long Kong uh, University. Okay. And then he's asking, could you um, 请告诉我一下, uh, 如果, Okay, so he's he's asking uh, how if I could uh, if you could tell me how to get to this university. Okay, so this sentence is. Uh, Okay, so this upside down M is like a sort of like a uh sound. Uh, uh, that's right. Uh. Okay, so ta dung zu la lao chui bo dui na. Okay, say it with me. Chui. Chui. Good. Now try it again. Dui na. Try it again. That was good. Okay. It's really foreign, so I'm gonna do my best. Ta dung ta dung zu la. I'm sorry. Ta dung zu la lao. See, after I hear you say it one time, I feel a lot more comfortable with it. It really helps to hear it, you know. Yeah, no, that's that's fantastic. Um, so I, I, I think those two sentences um, just go to show you IPA is a fantastic starting point it's a fantastic guide for understanding what your mouth is doing and well number then, one I don't, I don't really need to spend any time with you other than confirming that this this u is an uh sound i don't really have to spend any extra time confirming what these consonants the aspiration i don't have to spend any extra time like asking questions and re-asking and reconfirming i basically i just confirm one or two things and i go at it and I read it out loud, and then you tweak it a little bit. Oh, just adjust this and this, and it has all of the tones written in there. So basically, I I try it, you say it, and then I copy what you say, and I'm about 90, 95% on, right? Yeah, yeah. No, no, seriously, that's your first time ever saying that. I would it's say within an hour of, of coaching that, tweaking that, we could bring it in. And then learning the writing system, this isn't to detract from the writing system, but oh. it's giving you a, a, a framework than to clip yeah. the writing system in that that it, that is correct. It's not the, built on just it, what your impression of the A letter is or whatever. It's it's precise. The the IPA is just it's just an awesome framework. It's I in my personal opinion, it's the best framework to learn any foreign language. Yeah. And I use it all the time for my Chinese students learning English. And I show them the aspiration in English. You know, all of these things really help. The long vowels, 
because in the English speakers, we don't really make those differences ourselves, but we hear it. Right. And so I use it all the time when I'm teaching my students. And IPA isn't the be all and end all. And there are many things that are happening with every sound. Like we had in a discussion the other day, you know, it's like each sound or all these binary bits in our mouths and our lungs happening at once. But it's right. one of the best graphic representations in 2D that we can sort of be able to uh, mimic something and have a good go at getting our mouths in place. You probably have no idea how many things I'm trying to control. <laughs> I'm really nervous when I'm trying to read this. I'm like, okay, I got to control my aspiration, my tone, my, my tongue position. I feel like I'm really controlling a lot of things. But when you're used to um, reading the IPA and you know where your mouth, it, I think the most important thing for students out there who want to be able to do this is that you need to practice each sound in the IPA separately and learn how to control your tongue position, your lip position, and your throat position. Uh, and like, like what you call them, the, um, the, what do you call your palatals in yes, your system? The, the, the palatal. You call them uh, the, the, the symbol in your, in your writing system? Yeah, the, the, they're the palatals. Uh, but I thought you had another, another name. You have the like cerebral the, uh, ones. Oh, the one the where it's like that, the cerebrals or the retroflex. Oh, the so that's when the Indians are talking like that. You're having the tongue rolling on the top of your mouth. If you can talk like you're from India, then you can, it's very easy to actually imitate the accent because then you have all of the retroflex sounds. That's right. So your tongues, they're in Thai. They've all moved to dental. But yeah, and anyway, I, I think that's that's been a great example anyway. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you, Stuje. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. And uh, I hope this has been helpful for people learning Chinese and Thai and any language out there. Get into IPA. Thank you very much. 好的，再见。再见。